Hi friends, Pastor Casey here, Director of Family Ministries at Foundry, coming to you live from just outside of Washington, D.C. for another episode of Good Noon. If you didn't have a chance to watch a worship service yesterday, I hope that you will. Uh, you can find that on our Facebook page, our Vimeo page, YouTube as well. Um, and I hope that you'll watch it and share it with uh, those whom you think it might bless. It is an honor to be with you today. I was thinking a little bit about what we might talk about. And I started thinking about time, just time as a concept, as a structure, as a thing that we all sort of adhere to. Um, and I thought a little bit about uh, this book by um, my professor at Duke. His name is Dr. Fred Eady, and he wrote this book, Book, Bath, Table, and Time, um, which is a Christian worship uh, resource for youth ministry. Uh, and it's actually got a lot of good stuff in it. And when I got to Foundry, I saw that this book was on the shelf. So, and there were a lot of them. So somebody has been using this book, which is cool because this is my professor and um, yeah, I obviously really like it. Um, anyway, so time is one of those components and he talks a lot about ordering time, how we order and pattern our time. Um, and that makes me think a little bit about rhythm and sort of, uh, the, the patterns of time that we fall into sort of creates this rhythm. And I'm the type of person that I just sort of keep my head down and do the things. And I don't know if that's the parent of young kids in me or what, but I just kind of, you just kind of do what you have to do. Um, and so I just kind of keep my head down and just, just work and work and work and work and do all the things all the time really until my body tells me that it's time to stop. Um, and by that point, it's too far, right? So my therapist and I talk about this all the time, um, that my, my mind should be the first one to tell me that my rhythms are out of balance or that my time is, um, is poorly patterned. And often that's not the case. Um, and I've, I've been watching just with regard to my body and illness, I was thinking about how um, when I do have symptoms of being ill, um, so like if I, if I feel sore or if I'm starting to ache or I have a runny nose or something like that, none of which I have right now, just to clear that up, but I have in the past, like had colds and I've had the flu a couple of times and stuff like that. And um, anyway, I, I trick myself <laughs> into thinking that I'm not ill thinking that I'm not sick. And so I'll just keep going and going and going and going and going. And what happens is that when I finally go to the doctor, because I can't go, you know, can't work anymore, can't do any more things. Um, and they tell me, oh, you have, you know, both strains of the flu or which has happened or, oh, by the way, like the pain that you've been feeling, you have shingles. Um, <laughs> both of which have happened in my life. And in those moments I go, Oh my gosh, like there's this like whew, relief of like whatever. And then I feel this flood of pain, like intense flood of pain that I haven't allowed my body to feel or experience or whatever. I've just sort of tricked myself out of it. And so it isn't until somebody says you are sick that I feel like it's okay to be sick or you are unbalanced that I feel like it's okay. I'm, I'm allowed to like, you know, try to process this and move through it now. Um, and essentially I kind of do the same thing, even when I'm not ill, I just press forward and on and on and on and do whatever is in front of me. Like right now, this good noon is in front of me. I am doing it. Um, I just, as a, as a personality type, am a duty fulfiller. I am perfectionistic. If you're familiar with the Enneagram, I'm an Enneagram one. Um, and so I think that, that I, I, I'm trying to achieve perfection all the time. And I also don't necessarily believe that there is such a thing. <laughs> so I'm like constantly trying to reform 
everything that I'm doing, perhaps things that other people are doing. Um, yeah, so it's just, that's sort of my reality. And so how I get sort of tangled is when I don't pay attention to my time patterning, patterning. Um, and when I don't pay attention to the rhythms, um, and often it takes being sort of jerked out, like by something, by illness, by, um, emotions that I can't quite explain or place. And so one of the things that I, I work through quite often is trying to find a balance, trying to find a good balance of everything. Um, and then realize almost all the time that I'm not doing that very well. So a lot of folks have asked, um, I've been, you know, really sweet and thoughtful to ask about like how my husband and I are managing this pandemic, both of us working full time and also two kids and doing all the things that we're doing at Foundry. And, you know, mostly my answer has just been like, we're just doing it. Like you just got to do it. And so we're doing it. But if I ever sit and think about it, I get like really overwhelmed. It's like that moment when somebody says, Oh, right. Like you, you're sick. <laughs> I, when somebody says, Oh, right. Like you must feel unbalanced. That I get that this sort of wave of like, Oh, right. Like we're just hanging on. Um, and so I actually am recording this early and you are receiving it on a different day because I am on vacation this week. And part of that vacation is an opportunity to recalibrate and reorder my time, um, to engage Sabbath in a new and fresh way, to feel renewed um, and to have some, some space. And also um, knowing that like, vacation isn't really fully it, right? Like, um, it's easy to sort of, well, it's not easy for me to take space and take vacation, but when I am on vacation, it's easier for me to not sort of, um, look at stuff or to feel unbalanced. Like I can sort of focus in on a new thing and a new time patterning, patterning. That's really hard to say time patterning. Um, but the harder thing is to figure out how to balance in the midst of everything, right? And right now it's a really difficult thing to manage. And so I wanna say one, you're not alone. Um, this is an immensely difficult task. And two, um, well, here's sort, of, here's sort of an example. One of the things that I um, have gone back and forth on in youth ministry is whether or not uh, kids should keep their cell phones when we're gathered together or whether or not we should take them up or like if we're on retreat or something like that. And I've done both things. I've had kids, um, I've had like a shoe rack hanging on the door and I've had kids, you know, come in and drop their phones in there just for the time that we're together. And, um, and that's been good. And also I've had phases where I've been like, you know, taking it away doesn't really show us how to be present when we have it right here, you know, like if, <laughs> if, um, if we want to teach our young people how to be present in this digital age, then part of that is overcoming the, the phone being in the hand. Um, and so sometimes that can be reinforced through, uh, asking them to put it away. And sometimes that can, you know, be reinforced by teaching them new patterns and new time patterns and new rhythms. Um, one of the best things that I've ever done with youth is meditation. And actually it's had a, a really high success rate of um, inviting the kids in, letting them have space and us, us shifting into a meditation. Um, we started at like five minutes of just complete silence um, and, and shifted up and up and up and up until we finally got to 10 minutes and we would do the examine and just sort of go through the day and think about the places where we might've seen God or where we didn't see God. And eventually the kids were, were asking to do it. Um, and, and part of that is, is some of what Dr. Edie talks about in Book, Bath, Table, and Time is introducing spiritual practices to young people 
all of this is important for young people, but it's also important for us. I find that when I don't have a meditation time or when I don't have time to sort of just sit and be still, as I'm sure um, you can imagine with a, a five-year-old and a two-year-old and being in the house all day, like it gets really loud. There's a lot of noise. Um, and so if I don't have that meditation space, it's really hard for me to connect um, to spirit, for me to connect to myself. Uh, and part of that, the disconnect I was speaking about earlier with, you know, working, 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 working until I look up and realize there is this thing happening is a disconnect with myself. And so this repatterning of time and this um, sort of giving ourselves a new rhythm has a lot about, has a lot to do with connecting uh, with God and, and probably even more to do with just connecting to ourselves. Um, and in this digital space where we are only connected in, in this way, um, I would venture to say that it can be really easy to disconnect from ourselves, um, probably easier than normal because we have to be plugged in literally to so many different things. And so, yeah, so that's kind of what I was thinking about today. I hope that uh, you might find space to, to cultivate that connection with you and figure out um, if the patterns that you're, the patterns that you're experiencing of your time and if the rhythms that you're feeling of your time are wonky or out of balance and that we might take steps to move forward to figure out how to be balanced. And if that means, you know, taking space, if you're able to do that, um, or if it means trying to figure out in the midst of the whole thing, how to have some more balance um, to do that as well. So let's pray. God, we are thankful for the gift of time. We pray that we would be good stewards of this resource uh, for the work of the kingdom and also for us. Um, God, we pray for your help and for your comfort and for your peace that we may know that we are loved and that we are held in your embrace all the time. God, we pray for balance, that we might know what that feels like because um, for some of us, including me, it's hard to even recognize balance. Balance still feels like the scales are tipped just in the wrong direction. So God, show us balance. Show us health and Sabbath and what it might feel like to be drawn into divine rhythm, into the undulation of your spirit and be rocked um, in rest and comfort and sleep if we need it. God, we love you and we dedicate the rest of our week to you. And it's in the name of the Holy Trinity that we pray together. Amen. Well, another one of the reasons that I've been thinking about time and pattern and rhythm is because we have decided to do family camp this year and to do it virtually. So we're gonna keep the same um, date. So Family Camp is originally scheduled to be September 4th through 6th. We will still be doing it September 4th through 6th, and there will be a virtual edition. Um, and it's gonna kind of be adapted from uh, the rule of St. Benedict, who was um, a monk and established this really interesting rule and way of living. And so we'll adapt some of that for us to be able to do in our homes with our own families and then we'll have some connection points along the way that will still feel like hopefully respite and rest. Um, we'll do some uh, Celtic uh, theology and, and prayers that will be really beneficial to our rule together and just just work through this uh, what is a pattern what is a healthy pattern of time look like in our uh, in the midst of a pandemic, but also in the midst of all the things. Um, and so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to do that together. So I look forward to that. 
I uh, hope that you'll stay tuned to our Facebook pages and our um, other social media pages to see what Foundry is up to this week. And I hope you'll tune in tomorrow for uh, Pastor Will at 10 a.m. for Wandering Toward Wonder. Um, it's been an honor to be with you. And as always, good noon, everybody. <laughs>